five? Yes. Why are we mainstreaming delusion? Uh, it's not delusion. Why, why would delusion. you call it delusion? Because Bruce, Caitlyn Jenner, I'll call him Caitlyn Jenner. No, because it's that's her. Gonna... You're not being polite to the pronoun. Because it's disrespectful. It, okay, forget about the disrespect. Facts don't care about your feelings. It turns out that every chromosome, every cell in Caitlyn Jenner's body is male with the exception of some of his sperm cells. You it turns out that he's male. Wait, I need it to... turns out that he still has all of his male appendages. But, but, How he feels on the inside is irrelevant but, to the question of his biological status. I'm not completely and totally bipartisan, yet still Republicans in the House won't even bring the bill to the floor for a vote. Richard, that I just tells have one you question. right there, Larry, that they don't agree with the pathway to citizenship. Why well, I I can't they vote? Uh, honestly, I have one question in all of this. Seriously, just one question. Why not just secure the border and then put a pathway to citizenship why in? Why can't those happen at the same time? Why don't you answer my question instead of asking me back why? I, I just explained to you why they can't. Uh, here's why they can't happen at the same time. As you secure the border, the border remains somewhat open. People cross the border because they feel that if they get in before the deadline, if they get in before the border is secure, then they are somehow included in have the pathway to the citizenship. You have what no, do you think is happening? There's no law right now. But in oh, the that's Senate no bill, law right we now. talk about, we talk You're about right, there's no law against crossing the border illegally. We repeatedly, what you do, and I've seen you do it on, on the program, is you keep saying to folks that if they disagree with you politically, then somehow this is a violation of, of what happened in Sandy Hook. And you have yet, I, I, I would really like to hear your policy prescriptions for what we should do about guns. Because you say that you respect the Second Amendment, and you yeah. know, I brought this here for you so that you can read it. It's the Constitution. And I, I would really like for you to explain to me what you would do about guns that would have prevented what happened in Sandy Hook. Just to be, just to be clear, if I attempt to enter that hall right there and sit down just to listen to somebody speak, or if I attempt to ask a question sir. or to engage in free speech, you will have me arrested. At this point, yes, sir. Okay. And I'm glad that we've uh, clarified that situation. I'm also glad that uh, in a city, I mean, clearly you have great security. I'm glad in a city that has uh, some 4,000 shootings to this date, you have 30 members of security just for a 59165 Jewish guy. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, this is maybe you. a mild allocation of Thank resources. You. Well, okay. Well, if that's the way we're going to do this, then we'll just do the events elsewhere, folks. So follow us. Talked about income inequality, and you suggested that all wealth is inherited. This is nonsense. According to according to the IRS statistics, if you are born into the bottom 20% of wage earners in the United States, you will not be one of the bottom 20% of wage earners in the United States. 90% of people will not be within 15 years. There's tremendous wage mobility in the United States of America. Plus, there is not a group of people who just sit at the very top and stay there. People move up and down, in and out of the 1%. 1% just defines the line of income. It doesn't define the people who are in that 1% of income. I've been in the 1%. I've been out of the 1%. It will happen to lots of people. People. people who are older tend to be more likely to be in the one percent. They weren't once in the one percent. What happened? NCAA boycotting North Carolina, but they still have separate men's and women's divisions, which is weird, right? If, you, if, if, if sex is just arbitrary, then why do you have women's divisions? Why can't it just be a bunch of six, eight dudes who weigh 300 pounds, you know, banging around in the, in the paint with a bunch of five, three women, right? If we can just trust the government, then why aren't we just trusting the government to do the right thing now? I don't understand why a piece of legislation makes them better at what they do. I mean, the government is not very good at what they're doing now. Why, did, why does new wording make them not suck? Because part of the reason... <laughs> problem that I have. I think that you can accept and tolerate people's behavior um, and that, you know, demonstrates non-homophobia. I think that it is ridiculous to suggest that just because you're not celebrating, you know, on the cover of Sports Illustrated, somebody coming out of the closet and you think, you know, it's relatively unimportant in the grand scheme of things because people should be able to live their lives the way that they want. I, I don't really understand. You know, there were folks who were saying that that was a homophobic tweet. And I'm still confused as to how it's homophobic simply to say that you don't think it's a heroic move in today's America to come out of the closet the same way that it was maybe 20 years ago. Well, we haven't had an ATF director for the last 10 years. We haven't, we haven't had an ATF director for the last 10 years because the NRA won't even the NRA won't even allow us to have a surgeon general because because the guy uh, wanted common sense gun control. Well, the, the ATF is a little bit uh, busy smuggling guns south of the border to the drug cartels. Oh, come on. Employees all thought that God's will was the same thing that the owners of Hobby Lobby think God's will is. There wouldn't be an issue here, would they? Because they could give the insurance, whatever insurance, and they could rest assured that their employees would choose like they would. The, the question in Hobby Lobby is whose freedom is being infringed upon? 
Employees' freedom is not infringed upon when they enter into a consensual relationship with an employer that includes certain types of health care. not consensual. Of There's course it is. They can different. quit. Who is I mean, forcing them? Where is the gun? Explain. Who are the bullies? The bullies in America are the left. Uh, and internationally, they're the left as well. But what, what the left has done in the United States is something very clever. They've suggested that they are the people who stand up for all of the various victim groups in the United States. And then by necessity, everybody who opposes them is therefore opposed to victims, and they're the real thugs, and they shouldn't even be part of the conversation. That's why whenever you see Democrats out there, they're always talking about how Republicans have nefarious and evil motives, right? They're racists, they're sexists, they're homophobes, they are only standing up for the rich, they hate the poor. That's the kind of way that the Democrats achieve their goal. Liberals in the United States don't want to have a conversation. They simply want to remove conservatives from kind of legitimate mainstream political conversations that they don't have to discuss what's the best policy for the most Americans. On the gun control debate, they keep trotting out children as though we should be taking policy prescriptions from seven-year-olds. You know, it used to be in this country that when a president of the United States said, I'm dealing with this issue because, for example, my 13-year-old daughter cares about nuclear disarmament, we laughed them. We laughed at them. We laughed them out of the public sphere. Jimmy Carter comes to mind. When President Obama walks out there with a bunch of seven-year-olds and says, I'm doing it because these seven-year-olds, they care about gun control, give me a break. I mean, if we're taking our policy prescriptions from kids who can't spell either policy or prescription, we have a problem. Let me tell you something about safe spaces. There's only one group of people, one group of people, who want safe spaces that are race specific. There are only one group of people that want safe spaces so that they never have to hear from anybody of a different ideology or political persuasion. Those people are called fascists. Okay, and you've got a bunch of fascists, damn fascists on this campus, who are trying to shut down political debate and trying to cloister themselves in this little cocoon of stupidity so they don't have to debate anyone or think about issues outside their kin so that they can feel comfortable. Guess what? Life isn't about feeling comfortable. Life is about bettering yourself. Get off your stupid pansies. They have grave concerns about whether it's appropriate to prosecute somebody for gross negligence, which is why they've done it once that I know of in a case involving espionage. We can stop it there. So when I look this at is the a bunch of crap. Okay, everything he's saying right now is crap, and then I'll explain why this is crap. Number one, as far as the level of intent, he says, did she know she was doing something wrong, right? That's what he says. Those are his words. That's the second element. Did she know she was doing something wrong? Oh, let's see. Let's see. She set up a private server with all sorts of classified information in her basement and in her bathroom, and she had multiple servers, and she lied about it repeatedly. She was told by the State Department she shouldn't be doing it, and her people told the State Department to shut up. Did she know she was doing something wrong? Hell yes, she knew she was doing something wrong. My wife is a doctor, okay, which means she's accomplished more in her short life than Hillary Clinton has in her entire life. My wife is a doctor who takes care of people. She never at any point in her life sat around thinking, you know what, I can't be a doctor until Hillary Clinton, a corrupt old shrew, becomes a presidential nominee. I'm, I'm offended by the language of uprising applied to people who are breaking into other black people's stores and looting them. Uh, this, is not, this is a lack of values. And people who, people who are destroying private property, destroying cop cars, in an uprising against what exactly? Against the black police chief, against a mostly minority police force, against the black mayor, against the black president, against the black attorney general? against the entirely, uh, against a, a city council that, that is nine of 15 are black and all 15 are elected Democrats. Uh, what is the uprising against? What is it seeking to achieve? You have to speak the language of morality. You must speak the language of morality. The left wins because nobody on the left knows anything about politics. They know you're evil. That's it. They know you're a racist, sexist, bigot, homophobe who hates the poor. <laughs> Vision, but it's based, it's predicated largely on a, a moral vision of the world that is false. And that is that somewhere these business people who are engaged in competition with each other with ever shrinking profit margins, somewhere the McDonald's owner in his back room has a giant Scrooge McDuck money bin filled with gold. And each night he goes there and he just swims around in it, right? And he's, pre and he's preventing all of his hard laborers who are flipping burgers from earning their, their rightful $200,000 a year. And so we need a minimum wage. Real racists are and always have been folks on the left who wish to exploit racial division in order to pay off their cronies. The reason the education system sucks in the inner city is because the left wants to pay off its union buddies at the expense of black kids. The reason is this. The basic premise of socialism is, I'm here, I'm breathing, give me crap. <laughs> right? I, I have an, you have an obligation to care for me. I have a right to health care. I can force that doctor to go to medical school, expend $200,000, spend her entire life learning medicine, and then I can walk into her house and force her to provide me medicine. Right? Capitalism, by nature, is the opposite. Capitalism is the idea that I will starve unless I give you a good or a service that you want. The reason I say no, I'd be happy to let people win if they're not screaming. The reason I say no is because it's a fire hazard, and the last time people tried to create a fire hazard, they pulled the fire alarm in the middle of the lecture. No. 
don't give them ideas. And <laughs> I know they don't have many of their own. Make people feel good about being conservative, make them feel really, really bad about, feel, about being leftist. You know why? They deserve to feel bad about being leftist. They're siding with an evil ideology. Has rights. I believe that the mother has rights. I simply happen to be a person in some belief that those mother's rights uh, deem to uh, usurp those rights. But certainly in, it's not in, to in disrespect. What, in what world, in what world disrespect. would any of my rights allow me to kill another human being? First, I don't care about your feelings. Like, just, just make, be perfectly clear, I, I care nothing about your feelings. I care, I don't want to hear about your feelings, I don't want to ha hear about your subjective, your subjective emotions, I don't want to hear about your heart cries out to the, I don't care, you're not my wife, you're not my kid, I don't give a damn. Yeah, Chromosomes go ahead. don't necessarily mean you're male or female. Gender. With gender, Gender identity, go ahead. No, so. Especially, what, but even so, you have... A uh, thing like Kleinfelter's syndrome. So you don't know what you're talking about. You're not educated on genetics. Would you like to discuss the genetics? Or well, well, no, what no. Are your genetics. I, I, so I'd stay away from the genetics and back to the brain scans. You cut that out now, or you'll go home in an ambulance. Yeah, that seems mildly inappropriate for a political discussion. Employer and employee, and I think this is really the root of the morality of minimum wage when it comes down to it. And in in two sentences here is that I would never force an employee to work for an employer at a given wage. That violates the 13th Amendment and constitutes slavery or indentured servitude. Um, by the same token, I would never force an employer to pay a given wage to an employee because that is a lack of consent on the part of the employer and violates basic principles of fairness as well as freedom. The black families have zero or negative wealth. White family worth, in terms of uh, financial worth, is 69 times more than that of black families. Given this disparity, how can you argue that racism is not a driving factor in income inequality? Because it has nothing to do with race and everything to do with culture. And when you have a culture that doesn't... And when... And when... It, you know what? Explain to me. You explain to me why black kids aren't graduating high school. Explain that one to me. Explain to me why black kids are shooting each other in rates significantly higher than whites are shooting each other. Explain to me why 13% of the population is responsible for 50% of the murder. Explain to me why the, why the number of blacks and black kids in prison, not for innocent reasons, not for walking down the street and getting pulled into a prison, is so high. Explain, if it has nothing to do with culture, explain to me why the single motherhood rate in the black community jumped from 20% to 70% in the same course of time that the civil rights movement has made such tremendous strides. Is America more racist now than it was in 1960? And if it is, please explain to me how that happened.